welcome to our Moving Well class. Today we're working on making, increasing the comfort in our neck and shoulders, continuing on that journey. That's what most of the lessons have been. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and lay on your back, remember the essentials. You want to go slow, <coughs> paying attention to what you're sensing and feeling. Let yourself be curious and kind of adventurous. And when I say adventurous, I mean like be willing to vary your movement just a little bit, like shift in just a little bit of a different direction to see if it makes a difference in the ease and the comfort. Be a little exploratory. So as you're lying there now, take a few moments just at your own pace to tune in and feel how you're relating to the floor right now. How much of you is actually touching the floor? Where are there spaces? Notice your breathing. And when I say notice your breathing, means things like pay attention to where do you feel the movement when you inhale and when you exhale. How much of your chest, your torso expands when you inhale? Often there's, because of muscular contraction, chronic holding in the muscles, our breathing can be, become shallow or limited and we're not getting the full uh, benefit of a really nice deep breath. So that's one thing to notice at the end of a lesson. It's usually quite different. So now I'm going to have you, you're going to be in a little different position than you've been in for lessons before. Today you're going to be laying prone. You're going to be turning over, laying on your abdomen, and you'll want to you may need something under your head. You'll want to be able to rest your, your hands on your, your, your forehead on your hands. <clears throat> on the back of your hands. And then just spread your legs comfortably. And <clears throat> feel free to stop and turn onto your back at any time. If you need to before I say it's time to rest, do honor your own comfort level. And if you need to roll over and rest before I say it's time to rest, go ahead and do that. So with your legs spread just a little bit where they're comfortable, they don't have to be spread far, just wherever they're comfortable. Just Just very gently rock your pelvis and see what kind of movement is there available for you right now. Just rock your pelvis a little right and left. See if you can find a way to rock your pelvis. See if it rocks easier one way compared to the other. Just very gently rock and see what picks up the pelvis. And try doing it in slow motion. What is it that helps to pick up the pelvis? Is it the muscles of your low back? And as the lesson continues, just notice if at some point you notice your abdominal muscles starting to relax. And, and I'm serious about stopping and rolling onto your back anytime that you want to or need to. Do not, don't be a martyr, don't suffer. Really pay attention and honor your comfort. Now, bend your knees so that the soles of your feet are toward the ceiling and your two legs are more or less together. So you, you wanna bring your legs a little more together there. 
And then just very gently begin to tilt your feet just a little right and a little left. Our, he- our heels are stand together or do we fly like this? Well, play with it either way. <laughs> There are a couple ways of doing this. One way is to tilt your feet right and left with both of your knees staying close together, staying on the floor. And the other way is for the right knee to lift as you tilt, (coughs) as you tilt the knees, excuse me. So one way is for the knees to stay together. The other is for the right knee to lift as you tilt your knees to the left and vice versa when you tilt in the other direction. And then go ahead, let it go, roll on your back and rest. I think we'll probably need to take frequent rests during this, during this lesson. <coughs> now, this lesson will probably be an opportunity for you to really practice honoring yourself So I, I'm not just saying it, I'm really encouraging you to, if you're uncomfortable laying on your abdomen, do just a few moves and then roll onto your back and rest. You'll actually achieve more by honoring your comfort range than if you're laying there struggling. Be willing to just do a couple moves, notice what you feel, and then roll on your back. And then come back onto your abdomen. And again, bend your knees and I'm going to have you try a couple variations. One, put your knees together and tilt your knees a little left and a little right and just feel how that is. Notice what you're using to tilt. (laughs) Tilt your knees right and left. See the impact that has on your pelvis. And then spread your knees about hip width apart. And then Spread your knees about hip width apart, and then tilt your knees, tilt your feet. What difference do you notice in the tilting or in the impact in your pelvis, in your rib cage, your torso, with each of these variations? And then go ahead and lengthen your legs. And you can have them where they're comfortable. They don't have to be squeezed together. You can have your legs in a comfortable position. And now see if you can continue to roll your pelvis a little from side to side with your legs being long. Feel whether you feel movement in your spine, in your rib cage. Notice if you feel more movement in one side, on one side than the other. Is it, in other words, is it easier to roll more to one side than the other? And again, is it? Do you notice, is it your low back muscles that you use to roll your pelvis? The 
Let your knees be relaxed. Don't stiffen your knees. Just feel whether you feel movement in your spine, in your rib cage, and how much, spine, how much movement do you feel there comparing from one side to the other and comparing to how it was when you were tilting your knees. That's nice. I see some nice, easy, easy moving. That's nice to see. And I reiterate, if you need to roll onto your back and take a break, please do that. In fact, everybody stop and take a break. Roll onto your back. <coughs> Today's lesson is probably going to feel a little more like a workout than usual. <clears throat> and just feel the way you're lying now and the way you're breathing, the length of your spine. You might want to keep your towel rolls close so that you can pull it back under your head when, you, when you're taking a break. <clears throat> At least bring one more fold down there. Maybe another. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. And then roll back onto your belly, please. And this time, come up on your elbows and forearms. So you're going to lean on your forearms with your palms down, kind of like a sphinx. <clears throat> and now what I'd like you to do is to explore the, uh, the point of, for the most uh, comfortable support. So in order to do that, uh, I want you to play with moving your right elbow just a little more toward the center of of your body and lean on it and then slide it a little more to the outside. So you're going to be exploring, looking for, is the place I had my elbow initially most supportive to my shoulder or do I need to tweak it a little, go a little to the left, a little to the right? And then do the same thing, go a little forward and a little back. And then do the same thing with your left arm. You're looking for the position that is most comfortably supporting your shoulder. And when you have that, <clears throat> when, you, when you feel like you've gotten that position where your elbows are in the most supportive position, in that trajectory of your head, feel how that is to lean on. Figure out between um, the movements where you would like to be on that, on your elbows. <clears throat> and as we progress through the lesson, that will probably change. So just stay conscious of where your elbows are the most supportive. And now begin to round your upper back. So you'll be bringing your upper, your upper spine away from the floor, and that'll mean your shoulder blades will spread apart a little bit. And then slowly sink your spine between your shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades move more closely toward each other. And this, 
you're thinking of your sternum and your spine moving more towards the floor. And just repeat that. <coughs> so it's as if someone's putting their hand underneath your sternum and pushing up so that your shoulder blades separate and your spine moves backwards towards the ceiling. And then you bring your shoulder blades together, pressing your sternum forward and your spine forward. And then everybody stop and take a break. <clears throat> Roll on your back and rest. <clears throat> this lesson is a little more of a workout. It's just in the rolling from front to back. And <laughs> We haven't done a lesson that's had you on your abdomen as much as this lesson is, so uh, don't be afraid to speak up or to ask for help or to stop and rest. This, is, <laughs> this isn't the kind of work that you just tough it out. So if you're, if you're not finding a way to make it comfortable, don't hesitate to say so so that I can intervene in some way to help, help you if we can. But do take time to notice what's changed in just this little bit of movement. Be sure and rest as often as you need to. Absolutely refuse to struggle. And remember, you can always imagine. This is a great lesson for utilizing that because if there's a tendency, if you're over-efforting or if you're struggling, there's not going to be as much learning going on as if you stop and imagine. So this may be the lesson that <clears throat> encourages you to do more imagining. And now, I don't know if you remember which way you've been rolling, but if you do, when you roll over, roll the opposite direction <clears throat> of what you have been doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, come up on your elbows and forearms and hands. Now, very slowly, roll your pelvis to the left. Just You're going to be doing this in increments now. I want you to, in fact, this is a good place just to stop and imagine. You're going to be, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what you're going to be doing, and you take time to imagine doing it. You're going to be rolling your pelvis a little to the left. And you're going to be doing it in increments until you can start drawing up your right knee. So you imagine that you're going to be rolling your pelvis a little to the left, and you're going to be bending your right knee to the side. So you're going to be drawing your knee up to the side, up to the right side. And I will come around and do a little coaching with that. <clears throat> so you're thinking of rolling your pelvis a little to the left. And just let your leg lay down. And you're thinking of the movement's going to be initiated with your knee. Oh, down flat. Mm -hmm. So your foot will drag along and then straighten it out again. You're going to do this in little increments. And... So what has to happen is this comes up, 
and then put it back down, put it back down. See, you feel the movement here? And then we're going to do it again. So, and pa so just repeat it, doing it really slowly, and then taking it down and resting. So, and if you, even in your imagining, if you think of letting your eyes look down, letting your head look down a little, as if you're kind of looking towards that hip, Take a moment to imagine your spine, what's happening in your spine, how your <clears throat> spine is kind of curving this way. And you can even think of looking kind of down under your arm and to the right. Beautiful, beautiful, slow. And then let your, be, just be thinking of this all softening, rounding. Pardon? No, that doesn't work, does it? No. <laughs> so we want to roll to the right. Yeah. The right well, you, you're rolling on your left onto your left hip. Okay. Yeah. That, <laughs> I was stumped that time. So, and if you think, you know, of, you're kind of looking, you don't have to, just, you don't have to go that far. I'm just thinking, think, you think of your whole spine, how your whole spine's going to, and then come back down. So you're just doing this in increments because you're organizing. Each little move you do organizes you more. And it builds. So if your pelvis rolls to the left, what's above and below tends to move <clears throat> towards the center. Thinking this comes up. And you don't have to go far each time. It's just that this. Is there any pain? I can feel some twitching here. Uh, my right hamstring is trying to cramp, and I'm trying to. Oh, OK. That's, so you just have to do it really slow, or just imagine it. Great. I've been trying to do it just um, half an inch increments. Yeah. Having muscle cramping is quite common when we're doing something a little different than we've done before. <laughs> so as the, your pelvis, as you roll your pelvis over onto the left side, the right side lifts. And remember, just do a few moves and then rest. And then let it go, roll on your back and rest. <clears throat> Did I hear? <laughs> and take time to notice. I'm guessing that you probably feel some significant changes in your contact with the floor. And then come back onto your abdomen. And 
And again, come up on your elbows and forearms. And now, <clears throat> again, into the sphinx position. <clears throat> and now, this time, begin thinking, imagine rolling your pelvis over onto the right side of your pelvis a little so that you can bring your left knee up. And imagine how your whole spine is going to rotate. If you're thinking of the being in the sphinx position, are you finding discomfort in your upper back, neck, one of, the, one of the big signs um, that we deal with as we get older is, of aging is that holding our head in the vertical upright position uh, becomes a challenge. And that's because we begin to lose the mobility of our upper cervical spine and upper thoracic spine. And this is a lesson that helps to wake that up. So as you're rolling your pelvis, sometimes it helps just to have a little support to feel the lifting here. And then go down. And then feel the lifting, the rotating of your spine. And go down, push the belly out. Mm. <laughs> You're having a real workout, aren't you? Yeah. Really? So be willing to do just a little. Move, and this is your perfect opportunity to imagine. My shoulders, when I have them like this, I get, it, I get tingling down my arm. Uh, so I have like a pinched nerve or something in my shoulder, I guess. Oh, neck. Okay, so let's see if there's a way we can have you near the position and imagine. Is it? Does it start doing that as soon as you come up on it? Mm -mm. Okay, so then you just want to do a real brief time on it and then quit and rest. As soon as we start having pain or cramping, then you know the learning stops. So we might as well just stop there. So go ahead and, and try just being in that position and then imagining the move and then come out of the position and rest. Just do, do it imagining a, a few times. Everybody stop and rest. Roll onto your back. Is <laughs> that? There's a lot of rolling over in this lesson. Yeah. As long as you don't say elegantly roll <laughs> no, over. It's not pretty. <laughs> All right. So take a few moments just to feel what's changing in your contact with the floor. You're putting more effort into, well, even into the rolling over back and forth than is usual in, in lessons that we've done. But we have to start someplace. All right. Notice your breathing. Is anything changing in your breathing? A lot goes on in the, in the spine and in the rib cage, just in the rolling over, over and over. So, okay, when you're ready, Take a couple more minutes. Do you feel a pretty significant difference just from those few movements? Mm -hmm. 
one of the reasons for um, the big impact or, or feeling the changes more in a lesson like this is because you're doing uh, more, more movements that are radically different <laughs> than what we have been doing. And sometimes just the impact of the, no of the novelty of the variation in moves makes a big difference <laughs> in the central nervous system. Okay, now roll onto your abdomen again. <clears throat> and this time, let yourself lay down uh, your, let your head rest. You can let your cheek rest on your hands. So you're not going to be holding yourself up. Make yourself as comfortable as you can in this position. <clears throat> and now, in this position, begin to draw up your right knee. You're going to be doing the move you were doing before when you were up on your elbows, but you're going to be doing it laying down. So there will be a little little less resistance. You can rest your forehead on your, the back of your hands, or you can have something under your forehead and have your hands just up kind of sphinx style. So play with rolling your pelvis a little to the left and beginning to just draw your right knee to the outside a little bit. You don't have to go far. Just begin to do that movement from one side to the other. So you bring that up, then you straighten the right leg, and then bring the left leg up a little bit. And start with just doing a small move. A small move on the right and then a small move on the left. But notice, do you initiate it with your pelvis or do you initiate it with your knee? And do it in slow motion. When we move slowly, it gives our brain more of a chance to intervene and make some different connections. And notice your breathing as you're doing this. And as you're doing, as you're alternating, and then pause in between, be aware of the rotation that you feel in your spine and the rotation that you feel in your ribs. So those are the parts that we're thinking of waking up. And you can put your attention on your spine, thinking of how your spine rotates. So think of different parts of your spine as you're doing this. You're doing beautifully.
and just keep thinking of different parts of your spine as you're doing it. And it doesn't have to be big. It can just be a real small, subtle movement. But the more of your spine that you can bring into your picture, the more of your ribs, beautiful. Nice. And just think of increments. Beautiful. Nice. Let this movement be beautiful. You're doing beautifully. moving. You're good. You're good. I'm just t touching to bring more attention. We're looking for movement in the spine, movement in the ribs. And then let it go, roll on your back and rest. Sure. Mm -hmm. If we are getting cramps, because my back was starting to cramp up, mm -hmm. does that mean I'm doing it wrong? No, it doesn't. It just means you're doing something different than your body hasn't been doing. And, and the cramps are real common. And I still will get cramps at times when I'm doing a lesson. It, you know, we're in life, we're in daily life, we've got our habits, and then as we begin to introduce movement in new parts of ourselves that we haven't moved in such a way before, that's just a reaction in the body. It's a, a reflex reaction. Okay. So, as long as I'm doing them, okay. Yeah, as long as, as, long as you move slow and, and stop if anything is cramping, <laughs> that's a sign to... It's a real clear sign of stop, you know, slow down. <laughs> that. Yeah. It's not, not like driving on ice when you steer into the skid. You don't steer into the cramp. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's quite an analogy, <laughs> a reverse analogy. Yeah. But notice, are you feeling different in your contact with the floor? Okay. Just, is there a change in your breathing? And then slowly roll onto your abdomen again.
And just go ahead and, and lay down. So that you're comfortable. And your arms can be, <clears throat> if you need to support your head with your hands, the back of your hands, you can do that. <clears throat> or you can just have your arms in the sphinx position. <clears throat> if you're comfortable with your arms in the sphinx position and your forehead resting on something, um, that would be uh, a good move. <laughs> but if that <clears throat> doesn't work for you, Okay. Okay, if you're let's see what do I want to do here? Put your arms so that your forearms are resting on the floor um, on either side of your head. So you're not really leaning on your arms. They're just resting there. And now just laying there, just begin rolling your pelvis a little left and right. Remember at the beginning, we were kind of exploring what is it that you use to move your pelvis. And now turn your head to look to the right. So your head's resting on your side. And now begin to gently roll your pelvis to the left. That means the right side of your pelvis is going to lift. And take a moment to imagine rolling your pelvis, rolling to the left, bringing your knee, your right knee out to the side, drawing your right knee up. Your pelvis is going to be lifting to make room for your right knee to come to the side and come up. You don't have to bring it all the way up. Just begin to do it in little increments. Paying attention to where you feel the rotation in your spine. and attention to where you feel a stop. Just do this in nice, slow motion. Be sure you're breathing, imagining your spine turning, imagining your ribs moving. <clears throat> Only go as far as is easy. Struggling to go higher doesn't gain us anything. Just go in the range of ease and then bring it back down. Bring it back down, all the way down. Then when you have it back down, just lay flat for a moment. Take a moment to feel just the impact from having done that little bit of a move. And then turn your head to look to the left. And take a moment to imagine doing the same thing with your left leg, that you're going to roll your heel towards the left. Your knee will point towards the, you know, your heel's going to roll to the right. Your knee's going to point to the left. And slowly draw it up a little, feeling the rotation of your sacrum, the rotation of your spine, 
the rotation of your ribs. <clears throat> And take note of what part of yourself do you use to initiate the move? Is it your pelvis? Is it your leg, your knee? Is it your ribs? <clears throat> Now, the next time that you have both your legs long, <clears throat> take a moment to imagine this. Imagine just rolling your pelvis a little left and a little right, just a little bit, a little left and a little right, with just the beginning of engaging your leg. So you, you, when you roll your pelvis to the left, your right knee will begin to turn. To, to bend to the right a little bit, and then you'll just come back down. It'll go just a little bit, and then come back down and lift the left hip, and the left knee will come out a little to the left. So you're going to just kind of rock your pelvis a little bit, just in s slow motion, just a little bit. <clears throat> just a little bit. And then do it just a little quicker. Just a, it has to be just a little tiny little, just enough so that you're feeling the rotation of your spine and the lifting of first one side of your pelvis so it rotates in your hip joint and then the other way. And then just do a quick, just a easy clip, clip, bloop, bloop. Rocking your pelvis back and forth. <clears throat> and then leave it alone and roll on your back and rest. <laughs> Did I hear a phew? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well this <clears throat> there. Now feel what is different than when you first laid down. Is there a change in the contact with the floor and how you're resting now? What about your breathing? Okay, now you've been doing <clears throat> quite a bit of rotating in the spine. <coughs> so take a few moments now to rehearse in your mind how you're going to roll over and how you're going to come to stand.
what parts of you feel more available to rolling over now. Or are you feeling like you've had a workout and you'd like to just keep laying there? (laughs) That's it, huh? (laughs) All right, you did a great job, guys. This was uh, different movements than we've done before. So, okay, when you're ready, when you've figured out just how you're going to roll over and how you're going to come to stand, just go ahead and begin to do that. You feel kaslavished. I feel what? <laughs> Squish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel pretty good, actually. Yeah. Really tune in and pay attention to what you feel that's different. In standing now, just let yourself turn as if you want to look to the left and then look to the right. How much of your torso is available for turning now? Can you feel it? rotating around your entire spine. And then pause. And then just think of your right hand going down your right leg, and then your left hand going down your left leg. A little side bending. See what's available in your ribs now, in your your spine. And then just let yourself, let your whole self turn as, to look as though you're looking around yourself, your whole torso turning. And then back to neutral and go ahead and walk around.
impaired knee and my impaired ankle has me walking sort of almost a, a limp, limp stagger kind of feeling. Not a lot, but I, I feel that. A little bit. I feel that, and so I'm mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to counteract that and strengthen the muscles. That, because, you know, when I step on my right foot, my mm -hmm. right ankle, and pain, and so I tend to shorten that. Shorten step. staying on it. And so I, 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 mm -hmm. I hit hard on that, that foot, and then the reverse happens. My left knee gives me some, just, it's not pain so much, it's just static. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it other than just. It's a little signal. Yes, yeah. just a signal, exactly. Mm -hmm. But the awareness of the muscular and skeletal awareness is, I didn't even know it was out there. Let alone. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rude awakening <laughs> of what's, but you know what? Not the rudeness, but the awakening is there, no doubt. Well, you know, it's, the rib cage is something that gets so locked up in us. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us, and just a reminder that we are here every Tuesday morning at 9.30 a.m., 9.30 to 10.30, and you are most welcome to come check us out and join us for a lesson if you'd like to. My name is Shirley Delorier, and I would love to have you come. Take care and keep on moving well. The Canine Stray Rescue League began with one woman's dog and a dream. In 1990, Carol Powell lost her dog and searched multiple animal control centers to find him. When she did so, she discovered perfectly healthy dogs needlessly euthanized due to limited space and decided to do something about it. She traveled to multiple animal control centers to buy dogs on death row and then sat outside supermarkets giving them away to healthy and loving homes. Around this time, Powell bought the property where Canine Stray Rescue resides to this day from a friend. There was only one building to house the dogs, and the rest remained outside in the cold. Flash forward to 2001 in Flint, when current president of the Canine Stray Rescue League, Lori Stevenson, met Carol Powell. Both passionate about dog rescue, they united their efforts and traveled across Genesee County to various animal controls to save dogs from euthanization. Until they found proper families, they often kept the dogs in their own homes. The numbers of rescued dogs grew, and Canine Stray Rescue League began to take shape. Powell and Stevenson ran it themselves with a board of directors. As their funding and popularity grew, they were able to purchase more housing for the dogs. Today, Carol Powell is retired, and keeping the dream alive, Lori Stevenson heads the canine group. She takes in dogs from all over Michigan and from states that border Ohio. When asked how her rescue missions impact society, Stevenson replied that if we teach our children to have compassion for dogs, they'll treat everyone in their life with that same compassion and charity.